Let me start off with you, Gajan. This is a rich price to pay for this company, right? The price, in fact, is about four times what Global Logic was valued at just three years ago. So why does it make sense for Hitachi? Look, I think, um, you know, th th thank you for having us. Uh, you know, uh, look, th th for us, uh, this is really, you know, the, the pandemic overall has been has been really accelerating the, the migration to the cloud and, and fundamentally changing sort of digital transformation. And and in in looking at global logic, we've been extremely confident with the the with the the business that, that that they're in and and their forecast of that business. In addition to actually giving us the ability to really drive international growth outside of Japan. So you know that's what has has uh, driven us to to go ahead and make this acquisition. I'm very 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 excited about it. Shashank, I'm curious, how has the pandemic affected Global Logic's business going into the, the finalization of this deal? And what makes sense about it? You know, what are the most attractive aspects of how it was done for Global Logic? Yeah, the pandemic has only has accelerated the digital transformation. If you see that the companies which have survived or thrived in the pandemic are digitally further ahead. And there are companies which are sitting on the fence, they are taking the aggressive posture in terms of going digital. And that all helped global logic business because global logic business mainly is to use digital engineering services to get these companies in digital transformation space. Uh, with reference to Hitachi is perfect actually. Some of our sectors like automotive and industrial and communications and media, all those sectors clearly marry with that of Hitachi sectors. So it's a perfect combination try to try to get to the next level. So, Shashank, what is Global Logic bringing to the table in this merger, especially when it comes to your client networks? Yes, uh, it's uh, number one actually is Global Logic. Sixty percent business is a Fortune 500 client, so that is number one. Number two is we have design, engineering, and data, and we marry that together to see the world way it should be, not the way the way world is today. And that is actually very essential for companies like Hitachi to transform themselves and then transform their clients. So, Gajan, when it comes to the Lumada business, which Global Logic is joining, right? Yes. How much of it could actually come from overseas? What's the target right now? So, you know, so today about 53% of our of our business is outside of Japan, and you know, really the the growth momentum that we're seeing across, you know, all of our businesses, whether that be our direct to customer business, where you know we're we're delivering IT services and solutions and products, or our uh, our industrial businesses, so everything from our you know our our rolling stock, you know the bullet trains and elevators, through to water systems and energy, we're seeing a significant push in terms of digitization of those businesses, especially in North America and Europe. And we really see Global Logic together with Hitachi, and uh, you know to to be able to put together the type of digital solutions that we could deliver to our clients on top of the product base we have, in addition to enabling and driving their own. Um, uh, you know, digital aspirations in, in terms of transformation. Gajin, this is so different from the idea I think a lot of people have of Hitachi as being, you know, an appliance maker, a hardware maker, right? The CEO said that this deal is kind of a, a reform for the entire company. How transformative is it and how does it feed into, I guess, what your view of how the company looks in five or ten years' time? You know, I, I, th I think it is truly fundamentally transformational for us as Hitachi. Uh, you know, in every business line that we're in, every product that we're in, uh, you know, digital is becoming increasingly more pervasive. And as, as you asked Shashank earlier, uh, you know, COVID or the pandemic has only accelerated that transformation. And, and honestly, I think for us to be successful, we have to be as much of a product company and operations technology or T company as much as we are a software company. And so, you know, really global logic gives us the underpinnings to accelerate and, and catalyze both our journey and that of our, our customers. So that's what makes us really excited about this. Gajan, will there Gajan, be, we... when it comes to these structural changes, perhaps some of redundancies, uh, some of the business parts as you come together that will need to go? Actually, you know, I, I, we, we look at this as an ad addition to our existing technology portfolio. You know, I'm not sure it's, it's well known, but, you know, about 20% of our business today is technology. Uh, so in many ways, it, it, it strengthens the core technology footprint we have in our tech sector. In addition to providing a, a, you know, extending our service capability and deepening our ability to deliver solutions to our customers. So less about cost and more about our ability to enable ourselves, but also our clients to accelerate sort of and open up new revenue streams by building software that digitizes 
uh, their products or their businesses. Shashank, we've seen so much strength and growth in your industry as a result of the pandemic. I'm curious, do you see these trends continuing post-pandemic? Oh, ab ab absolutely, right? Yes, yeah, I, so I think... Sorry, go ahead, Shashank, go ahead. No, I, I think digital transformation is actually a continuum. It's not about uh, application or something for a year. It's around 10 to 15 years for the companies to actually get on the continuum. And so we feel that most of the Fortune 500 and 1,000 companies are going to be on this continuum. Gajan, same question for you. It, it, I, I, you know, I, I think Shashank is absolutely right. It's, it's a journey. You know, we're not going to be able to go in you know, for ourselves or for our clients and flip the switch and turn them into a digitally transformed company. This is a long journey. Uh, you know, we've been through a couple of iterations of it. Uh, you know, and, and this next generation around, you know, around, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? engineering R&D or, or digital product engineering is, is really going to be, uh, you know, actually, I believe to be even bigger than the cloud transformation that we're going through and, and really do see a, 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 a long road ahead of us. So, so I actually am, uh, you know, looking forward to sort of a longer, um, you know, market trend that supports the, the, the two businesses coming together. Uh, guys, uh, to both of you, one sentence answers. First with Gajan, the biggest challenge in the next 10 years. Just transformation in general and embracing digital. Xiaoxiang? Talent. Talent is the biggest challenge. The, 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 the scope is so huge that the talent will be the biggest challenge for any of the companies to secure.